Cyril's mother or father? How would you categorize what you are? I'm Cyril's parent. Right. So you, you don't identify as male or female, right? That's right. That's correct. Mm. What, what do you identify as? Uh, Non-binary, trans. Right. Were, were you born a male or female? Pierce, I, I've seen your interviews. I know you've gotten in trouble for asking these questions before, and you know that this isn't actually the right way to ask them. I, I don't think the most difficult question in the world is asking a guest if they're male or female at birth. I really don't. You, you do. It doesn't mean I have to. No, when I was born, I was assigned female, but that doesn't mean I was born a girl. OK, and then you had a transgender... You had a, an operation to become male or not? So... I, I'll remind you, because I know this is not the first time you've heard this, uh, the genital configuration and surgical history of trans people is not actually the issue on the table. It's not the conversation that needs to be had. But that wasn't my question. There my are... question was simply, did you have the operation to change sex? As we would define yeah. it, not, not how you define okay, it. OK, so if, if that's the direction that the conversation is going to go, we can ask you conversations about if one of your testicles hangs lower, or how you feel about circumcision in your own life experience. Well, let me help. Well, let me help. Look, before, we're a family program, obviously. Let me help. I identify as a man. Susanna, I believe, unless things have changed in the last 20 minutes, identifies as a woman. Most people are happy to identify like that. I'm happy for you to identify any way you damn well see fit. It's fine. It's your business, mm. right? What I'm more concerned about is your baby having absolutely zero identity until it decides what it what it wants to be. Can I call it it? What, what do I call your baby? Is it an it? What What is it? I, I use the pronouns they and their. And the same pronouns I use for myself, I use for my kid. But they or their is for... They or, they or their is a plural. It's not a singular thing. You're a singular person. It has, it has actually been used as a singular pronoun in English since the time of Chaucer. Since so, the time of who? Chaucer. Oh, Chaucer, right. Yeah, but we've moved yeah, on a bit from yeah, Chaucer's language. Been, in, I mean, it's, it's otherwise I'd be, I'd be saying to you, verily I say unto thee, I think your baby at the moment should be assigned a gender until it's old enough to work out if, like, its parent... I was going to say father then, nearly dropped myself in it. Like, its parent, you know, can help it have that debate when, it, when they... So, it's so confusing. When they get older... All kids will figure out part who they are. I, Corey, I completely, you know, with, with total respect, I completely understand that you do not want your child perhaps to be restricted by the social and cultural expectations of a gender identity. I get that, you do know. You? Yeah, because there's lots of mums and dads who might not want their child dressed in pink or blue or to, you know, to have to play with certain types of toys and all the rest of it. What I don't understand is if your child has a, you know, a clear biological um, identity, why you don't want to just factually have that on a form which can then allow your child to apply for a passport the moment isn't, uh, your child is not allowed to have a birth certificate and then and you also it leads you and your child into all sorts of difficult conversations about identity as you said you know all sorts of intimate questions that you might not want to answer or discuss but inevitably are going to come out of this why not just allow your child to be male or female, depending on what they are at birth, but then decide for themselves how they want to act and be treated? Because operating in that way is operating from the expectation that not being trans is the default and being trans is weird. Or it's like it's, a, it's the, the exception to the norm. I don't actually believe that it's the exception to the norm. Uh, I believe that it's what we understand uh, as common, but I don't actually believe that people who are trans should have to be the only ones to figure out those parts of themselves and then go back and say the guest was wrong. I think that all kids should have room to to say, you know, like I like pink, I like bucks, I like, you know, I want to be called this, I want to be called that, uh, you know, I want to play certain games. And the problem is that the default, the the let's just assume that everyone's cis, assume 
that if you have a vagina, they can grow up, you can grow. The problem is that our society also is disadvantaging all of those people. But what happens if your, if your baby gets to four or five and decides it wants to identify as a monkey? Then what? Well, we'll, we'll probably have some important conversations about species and science and things that, you know, are appropriate for a four-year-old. Why would it be in a, but taking your logic? Why would it be inappropriate for your child when it, when they reach four or five to identify as a monkey? I mean, you because believe in the right. Because they're a human being. They're a, they're a human being, and we're talking about gender. We're not talking about species. Okay, so your baby can be a human being. They are a human being. Yeah. I'm raising them as a human being. Corey, we've reached a point of consensus. We both agree that your baby is a human being. Uh, Great. Listen, I'm glad we can agree. It's been fascinating talking to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. 23 minutes past eight. For a moment, that conversation strayed into areas I was slightly uncomfortable with. I do not have so low-hanging testicles, any... as far as I'm aware. But can I, I just... I can't uh... believe we had to even repeat <laughs> For somebody it. Probably...